going good. So preparing for the Indy Road Course this week. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And I, there's not. I don't know a whole lot about it yet. So, yeah, we're literally finishing up our car right now, and uh, I guess I'm gonna hop on the old Xbox tonight and play some Forza and try to learn the track. Cause that's really the only thing I can do right now for it. Yeah. I've- that's, yeah, I think I've played that, that game before. The Indy Road Course, they got it on there. So it uh get some practice on there. But you guys do have two practice sessions uh, on Friday. So that's definitely got to be an advantage because you guys haven't had any practice or qualifying as of late. That would be nice for sure, obviously. I mean, there's no way we could go there and just start the race and all of us go into turn one. And, I mean, like I said, I don't even know the track. So that would just be impossible to do something like that. I mean – so, yeah, it's good to have practice. I hope that we'll get some track time. I mean, 55 minutes goes by really fast in, these, in those sessions. So, especially if there's any cautions or any spins or people putting fluid or wrecking on the track and they're cleaning it up. So, you know, uh, if any of that happens, it takes away from our time. So, hopefully everything will stay clear as can be. So do you think these practice sessions for this weekend are going to be – they're obviously going to be different. It's going to have a different feel than they normally do, but do you think it's going to be a significant difference from when you guys normally just have practice sessions? Uh, Not really. I don't don't think so, you know. I feel like it'll be back to normal as it can be for sure. I mean, I don't see why it wouldn't besides, like, you know, all the people not allowed in there in the in the garage and the pits. Like, for instance, we would usually have every brake manufacturer would have uh, a couple brake guys there. So uh, we run Brembo brakes. So unfortunately, those guys won't be able to be there. So that kind of hurts us a little bit because they're always helping us with uh, the brakes and everything that goes along with all that. So that, that part would be different. But besides that, I, I don't think anything else will be. Do you like this move for, uh, to switch to the road course from the Oval? Yeah, I applaud NASCAR and Roger Penske for doing it because, you know, you just hear a lot of complaints about the Oval with the with our kind of race cars on it and whatever. But, you know, that track was built, you know, the early 1900s, I, I believe. Is that right? So, I, I mean, you know, we're doing the best we can to make the show as entertaining as possible. But I'm excited. I love going to Indianapolis. It's some place that, you just feel a ton of tradition when you roll in there, and it's awesome to race there. And I've raced there every year since 2012, and uh, and I want to keep doing that. Yeah, I, I think I really like the move. Uh, it's obviously different. NASCAR fans want things that are different. They want change. And I think it acts it, – it also makes the race on Sunday, the cup race, a little more special because it's the only race on the oval. And then everyone's excited as well for Saturday for the, for the road course. Good point. Yeah. It's very so good. Last weekend, you finished third. I mean, that's got to be a huge boost uh, for the team. It was a wild race. It was almost like a survival race. I mean, half yeah. the people were wrecking everywhere, and you guys have had, you know, I believe you have three top ten finishes this year, and uh, a third place at Pocono. I mean, that's got to be a huge boost for the team. Yeah, for sure. You know, I watched the truck race that morning, and I thought, wow, I, I don't think our race will be that eventful and I think you know first lap first turn bam we're wrecking already so I was like okay it is going to be that way so in my head I was like we need to survive first of all and then yeah at the end uh, I'm, I'm actually made a mistake speeding on pit road I'm talking just barely though the speed limit 59.99 with the five miles an hour over we get and I went 60.02 and 60.08 so that's that's really close but had to go to the back got the got back up there I think we got up to about seventh I believe or eighth I don't know it's hard to see where you're running when you're out there so uh then the caution came out I think two pitted we restarted six something like that and was able to take advantage on the last restart and pass three people and get third so that was awesome for our team because you know Pocono is a big track we don't have the speed that the, the big good teams have at those kind of places usually. So it was definitely a, a step in the right direction for sure. So switching back gears to the road courses, when people talk about recent winners, when they try to preview the weekend, you know, we'll talk about Austin Sindrick because he's won 
you know, the past two races. I know Allgaier is always good there. But then your name comes up because you were a winner at Road America. So do you, do you, I mean, do you feel like you have some sort of an advantage going into these road course races, knowing you've been pretty good there, even though no one's been to the Indy road course? Yeah, I don't know if I consider myself a favorite this weekend. I don't know who would be beside – I think Austin Sendrick will be for sure. He's been – I've heard he's raced there anyway is, is what I hear. I don't know if that's accurate. And then obviously he's in a Penske car, and anybody in a Penske car is going to be fast because those are really good cars, and they've got their stuff figured out the road courses. Then I look at a guy like Brandon Godovic. Uh, he's in the 26 car. I think he's raced there before. Anybody that has track experience is going to be good there. I don't know if Almendinger has any. He'll be fast. But I, I'm looking forward to the challenge. I, I have no idea, like, honestly, how good I'll be there because I've never been there. I've never even seen the track. So uh, I'm just looking forward to it, like I said. So it, it should be a lot of fun. And I like road course racing. It's to me, it makes me feel like I can push the car a little bit further than what it's capable of and, and be able to compete a little bit better than we normally would. Yeah, I think uh, if you're saying Austin Sindrick has raced there before, maybe in a some some sort of like a sports car or something, maybe he's yeah. done some laps there, I know, because all the road ringers are coming out. You mentioned uh, Brandon Godovic, he's in the 26. And then we have Preston Pardis. He came along. He's driving the 36. And then I believe someone else. Uh, there's a few other road ringers that have kind of come out to the smaller teams uh, to run. Oh, yeah, yeah. I didn't even know uh, about that Preston uh, part. Did you say Pardis? Pardis, yeah. Yeah, I didn't know. Yeah, it's. I haven't looked at the entry list exactly like that good, but I did see a few of those guys maybe on social media or something. But. Uh, it's hard to keep up every week when there's different people in different cars. So, yeah, the road course always brings out different drivers for sure. And sometimes you get behind somebody and you're like, who is that? You think, who is that in, the, in that car this week? <laughs> yeah, so um, to switch gears kind of to your team, you guys have been full-time for about 10 years now, right? Full-time in the Xfinity Series? Yeah, that's a while. <laughs> yeah, you, uh, you started racing before that. You had some races with uh, Johnny Davis, correct? Well, it was actually our same team. It was just we were using his number, and it would yeah somehow for some however we put it, it was maybe under Johnny's name, but it was same same team. I've never drove for Johnny myself, so yeah. I mean, I've raced uh, all my life, so my first. Xfinity race was in 2003, actually, when I was 18 at Pikes Peak. We attempted a race there. And then I think my next one was in 07. I drove the last five races that year for for a team uh, that shut down. And then then we just started our own up. And each year we kept racing more and more. And then in 2011, we were able to run full time and been doing that ever since. So it's been a lot of fun. You know, it's obviously very tough to do it this way uh but i feel proud of each year we've gotten better and better yeah it seems every year you guys have been around for a long time you're a well-known name in the xfinity series and every year you guys seem to get better you have three top tens this season already compared to the four that you had the entire last season so you know if that's a sign for growth and things that you can do this season i think that's really great yeah thank you i appreciate that that's always the goal is to make it better and better each year, as we get, if we get more funding or whatever, we try to make everything better and better. And, you know, that's really the reason why we've been around so long is because we don't spend recklessly. <laughs> like, like you see, honestly, some teams come in and go out pretty quickly. So uh, the way we do it, we cut a lot of corners, but we've been around and we can keep doing it and making it better and better. Just obviously, you know, by now I thought I'd be in cup, driving for a good team. But that hasn't been the case. I'm disappointed about that. But, man, I'm going to keep fighting and keep trying to climb up the ladder. You never know. Somebody might uh, need me and I could get a shot. Yeah. Has that ever – I imagine has that ever been a consideration for your team, either even just to, uh, you know, team up with some other cup team or get, like, an opportunity now that a lot of smaller Xfinity teams have thought about, you know, doing a few races with the next gen car. Uh, has that ever been, you know, a consideration for you guys, maybe to team up with somebody to get something going for you? 
I've talked to several teams. The obviously the problem is uh, the 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 dollars. Yeah, <laughs> it takes a lot. You know, I mean, if I had the dollars, I would have been already in it. So, unfortunately, it just hasn't worked worked out. I'd love to be driving for a good team right now, like I said, but I haven't uh, secured the funding to do that. And the funding I do secure, you know, basically just goes into our stuff and. To run cup, like if we tried to look at running cup, that's just uh, oof, it's a whole nother level, you know. With with the races are are longer, more tires, every it's everything costs about double it seems or more. So I just don't the money we get now, it, it, it's just it's impossible, unfortunately. So and those new cars coming out, those things, oof, they're really expensive, you know. I mean. I think they're three fifty k just to get one put together is what I hear. Yeah. I, I don't know, if it's totally accurate, but that's that's what I hear. So I don't know. It's a it's a it's a money sport for sure. You know, I always hear if you want to make a fortune. What was that saying? If you want to make a fortune in racing, it's like start out with a the lot and you end up with a little or something. Yeah, I think so <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, I was just I was just actually recently talking to uh, Caesar Baccarella, who's done some Xfinity races, sports car races, and he was talking about the next gen. He said it's you know he says he's excited for the smaller teams because they're gonna have to spend a little more to buy the car, but they said the cars they're gonna buy are gonna be the same cars as Joe Gibbs Racing is buying, the same cars as Hendrick is buying. So he thinks it'll equal out the field. You know, the smaller teams might have to pay a little more, but maybe it'll pay out in the end. Yeah, that's going to be that's going to be good to see. I mean, I I hope that's the case. But uh, like I said, you definitely got to spend a lot of money at first to get it going. So yeah. uh, I I don't we right now we couldn't if that was that much money, we couldn't do it for for one car and all the, you know, credentials and everything and the tires and everything you got to buy. It, it's that's you need a lot to start for sure. Yeah. So on another note, people said, a lot of people say, fans, drivers, that the Xfinity cars are basically the hardest to drive out of the top three series. You know, they're the toughest. Would you agree with that? I would say so. Obviously, they have the less downforce out of the other two. So, yeah, no doubt in my mind. I mean, the trucks have a ton of downforce. Obviously, the cup cars do too with the big spoiler and the brake ducts. Um, obviously, that's not what a lot of the drivers want. but they don't we don't really get to make those decisions so it doesn't really matter what we think I guess uh, unfortunately I mean if they want feedback they ask us but at the end of the day you know it's their circus and we're just you know the animals in it I guess kind of to say if that makes sense but yeah I, I like driving something that's hard to drive you know puts it more in the driver's hands I wish I remember before years ago a long time ago probably before Probably in 08 or 09 or even before all that, we used to have uh, – we run a tapered space, spacer now and it uh, takes away 90 to 100 horsepower. I wish we even had that off and that would have to make us let out the gas even more because I like when you have to let off the gas and drive the car with the gas and the brake instead of just being in it, you know, uh, wide open. That's, that's usually the tracks we can run better anyway because when you have to be – in the gas and it's all the car, that's where we get beat for sure. Yeah. Yeah. It's like a 50 50 split between fans. Some fans want to see all the cars bunched up, you know, full throttle at a place like Atlanta, you know, but some, some people want to see higher speeds. They want to see, you know, the drivers fighting a little more with the cars. They want to see more of the drivers, you know, it's like 50 50 split. And I think, I think NASCAR's, you know, they've, they've tried to occupy what, everyone wants and giving the fans what they want but I think the I think the Xfinity series I've definitely enjoyed the most this season as as a fan watching that's good to hear I I hope they hear that <laughs> you know let that be known for sure because I I think the same thing I love uh our races I think they're good shows most times sometimes every race is not going to be a good race sometimes somebody hits it better than everybody else and they sync up the show that's just part of it yeah people yeah people get you know upset on social media when you have a bad race and people say Pocono wasn't the greatest track and I mean we did have there were a lot of wrecks wrecks caused people to get interested 
But yeah, you know, that, that last few laps battle, I think it was 10 to go or is Ross Chastain versus Cindric. I mean, that was, that was incredible. That was definitely the best racing I'd ever seen at Pocono from what you guys just did this weekend. Yeah. I, I know one thing I passed a lot of cars all day. So I mean, it was eventful for me. I mean, we were three and four wide going down the front stretch a lot of the times. So, uh, yeah, I, I thought it was a great race myself at Pocono and maybe just racing there once a year is good. It gives it more, you know, a lure to it or whatever the word is that you want to use. But I, I, I like racing there and I think, uh, I always look forward to racing there to be honest with you. And I, I actually shift. So I enjoy that too. Yeah. I think there was like, I mean, some drivers don't shift, some drivers shift. I think what I was noticing in that battle between Cindric and uh, Chastain, Cindric obviously being more of a road racer, he's shifting always. Uh, I think Ross Chastain wasn't shifting, Cindric was shifting. And I think Cindric had him beat because he was shifting in the corner. So was that an advantage being able to shift? Or Oh, no question. Uh, he probably definitely – I know I was shifting, it was helping me. Cause I tried it both ways. I tried it around cars and when I shifted, I'd be faster, you know? So I, I noticed that. So yes, no question in my mind that that is if, if uh, chase was shifting, then it definitely uh, gave him a, an advantage. Yeah. So the Xfinity series, they have that, you know, limited tire rule, limited tire sets. And I see it a lot more than obviously we did before. It plays into strategy between, you know, teams not wanting to use their sets, even smaller teams. Like I know one of the notables was a team like Ryan Sieg in the 39. He always seemed to play that tire set strategy to save them for the end to wait for a yellow. Has that, you know, played into a lot of strategy for what you guys do? Yeah, I definitely. I think it makes it even another dynamic to the race. Uh, like, most time here lately, I feel like we can only get five sets of tires. That was the case at Pocono. That was the case at Homestead. Right off the top of my head, I think Atlanta even too. But, uh, I th yeah, you just got to – it gives the crew chief another part of the – piece of the puzzle to try to, you know, make your day good. So, I, I like it. It saves us money too, obviously. So, I mean, I'm glad there's a tire rule, and there needs to be one. Because uh, those big teams would just buy everything that they, they would let them. And we, we really can't. That's really our busy, biggest expense. Yeah, I like the tire set rule. keeps everyone kind of on the same page. And it adds another whole page of strategy because you have fuel strategy, tire wear strategy, and then tire set strategy. you got to save your tires. You don't want to use them all. And when we have the stages, you know, some people will stay out or use a set then. So I think it really plays out to a big strategy. Uh, during the race. I like it personally. No doubt. I, I totally agree with you. So at places like restrictor plates, and you guys are a single car team. So are there other teams that uh, you guys work with or talk to kind of for strategy or any like sort of little alliances that happen? Not really, man. You'd be surprised. I mean, we before the race starts at a play track, usually at driver intros or well, even in practice this year, at Talladega, literally walking up and down, looking for different drivers and seeing what their strategy was. Everybody's different, but, you know, half of them said, oh, we're going to hang out in the back. And I don't know, you just – even if you talk to somebody, they're, they sometimes they change their mind, you know, and you're like – you're out there riding together, and then it's like, what is he – why is he trying to pass me? I thought we were just going to ride. And then, yeah, you just never know, really. So – it's always up in the air, and it never seems like it can get itself worked out. But like at Talladega this, this past race, I worked with uh, Jeffrey Earnhardt a good bit, just, just riding around with him after the first stage to avoid any carnage that was coming up because I wanted to finish the race. So uh, I enjoyed working with him. He, he did what he was told me he would do. So that's all you can really ask. <laughs> yeah. Did you guys – End up, you guys ended up finishing uh, Talladega, correct? Yeah, we got. I actually got spun out by Briscoe uh, coming to the white flag out of turn four. Oh, yeah. uh, and I'm, I was in the middle lane. I moved down in front of him. I, I had a hole, but uh, he filled it up. And he said he let off and tried to avoid me, but, I, yeah, it didn't work. So uh, just one of those racing deals, really, I guess. 
Yeah, that's right. People on, I saw it on, on Twitter when I was scrolling through, but I saw it myself when I was watching. I saw a little car. I don't know if you saw the replay. Yeah. You probably did. There was a little car in the, the side of the screen. I was like, was that Jeremy Clemens? I was like, what the yeah. heck happened? Because I didn't, you didn't see anything yeah. before that. You just saw you like sitting down there on the apron coming across the track. And it, it was weird, like the way that, you know, cameras were aligned. And I was like, what the heck happened to him? But uh, Yeah, I know. I wish they could have covered that, obviously. You know, it was 10th one moment, and the next moment were 20-something. So they could have just said uh, just a little something, but the uh, the radio got it. You know, MRN, they, they picked it up, and uh, luckily we were we could hear everything that they said. So that was good anyway. Yeah, so for you, I, I've being around the Xfinity Series for a long time, over 10 years now, from your perspective, since you've seen a lot of things, how, how has the series changed from what it was 10 years ago to now? Uh, my opinion, there used to be a lot more big teams, you know. Um, I remember thinking, man, if we could finish 20th, that, that's a good day. I mean, that's just how stacked the field was. It was crazy. Uh, and now it's just less of that. You know, I feel like there's there's more teams like ours and less big teams, which I think is good because it's just, like I keep saying, so hard to outrun their equipment, their engineering, their money. It's hard to beat them. So I, I like the way it is now. You know, it's a lot easier to get top tens or even better finishes, in my opinion. Um, but yeah, you just see a lot of a lot of that's gone. A lot of uh, the big sponsorships that you used to have are not here anymore. Unfortunately, that that part uh, kind of stinks. But it's the way of life, I guess. So uh, yeah, I've seen a lot of teams and drivers come and go. That's for sure. Yeah, I think I think a lot of the teams, like I know Roush, you know, they used to have two, three Xfinity cars running every week. Now it's nothing. Chip Ganassi yeah. had one. That's gone. I feel like it's it's a lot of teams that are as Cup gets more expensive. I think the Cup teams that have Xfinity cars maybe are just canceling their Xfinity program, you know, focusing on Cup. And especially when they limit the amount of drivers a Cup guy can run, you know, it's only five races for you know certain Cup drivers like Kyle Busch. Um, so that when they limit those races, it's really given opportunities to guys like you, uh, you know, to shine. Teams like you guys, you know, the uh, I guess you'd call, you know, you guys the 51, you got the Brandon Brown's team, the 68, uh, like teams like those, even Ryan Sieg as well, that, you know, you guys have been around the sport for a while, for around the series for a while. And now, you know, I feel like more, more TV time, more time to shine for you guys as the, uh, as the series has gone. Yeah, exactly. You know, I mean, I, I'm glad that NASCAR limited those guys because they don't need to be in the races all the time. I mean, especially, I don't have a problem with them being in it, but I say if you want to race, race for a non-cup team. I mean, then we'll see how good you are. I mean, the things we go through, the challenges, and the we're just uh, so, like, it's not even funny how much of a, of a advantage they have yeah. uh, than over us. So, I'm just saying, like, it's hard to race Kyle Busch in a Joe Gibbs racing car. It's about impossible most times unless they're having problems. So, I say, yeah, Kyle, if you want to drive in the Xfinity Series, dude, that's great. But uh, drive for another team that's not Joe Gibbs racing. You know, we'll see how good you are then. But um, that's just the nature of the beast. Uh, you know, I've had to drive my own team this whole time and make it as good as I can with the funding that we get. So, it's it's just a challenge is what I'm saying. So, uh and I hear my car in the background, which is, they just fired it up. So I was like, I hope it's all right, because I just heard it, and it was making me, like, lose train of thought. But, uh, yeah, it's uh, – it's it's I love that they limited those guys, you know. Um, and plus, it, 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 it takes away, you know, money from us. That's really how we race is racing off the purse. So when those guys are in it, they're just taking more money from us. Yeah, I really, I, I like the idea that you just said, having cup guys, you know, race Xfinity or trucks, but, you know, race for another team. 
Uh, I think that's actually a, you know, really cool idea. I'm trying to think of people that do that. I know John Hunter Nemechek, when he races trucks, he races for Nemco. Obviously that's his dad's team, but yeah, well, that's not the greatest equipment in the truck series. Um, he runs for Nemco, I believe. I'm trying to think of anyone else. I know Ross Chastain is a guy who just runs everything. He just runs for any team. It seems like when he runs, you know, cup Xfinity trucks. So I'm trying to think of, you know, anyone who do that, but that's actually, you know, a really good idea. I think they should do that more often if guys want to run in the Xfinity series, you know, maybe run for a different team. Yeah. I, I've been saying that actually for a while. Just, uh, sometimes it's not heard. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so where, where is your, sh are you at like, you know, what you would consider your shop right now? Yeah, I came, I'm in my, uh, toter home cause it's the only, it's the, uh, safest, uh, place where no people are coming and it's not loud and yeah. uh you know i don't have like an office here uh per se myself i don't really need an office but yeah. <laughs> i have it at, at home uh but yeah i'm in my total home our shop is in spartanburg south carolina it's about an hour and 10 15 minutes from charlotte yeah, so you guys, you guys are going to be having a lot going on this weekend. I mean, you're, you guys are obviously going to be there, have two practices, but everyone has to move around, you know, the IndyCar series being there as well, and then, you know, the Cup yeah. cars come in. So I imagine they'll, they'll probably run that smoothly. Oh, yeah, Indianapolis, they always seem to have their stuff together. So I'm sure all that will be really great. And I'm look, looking forward to even seeing the IndyCars uh, racing as well. That'll be really cool. I I would love to drive one of those too. You know, I wouldn't care one bit. But uh, that's gonna be cool to be at a triple header this weekend. So hope it works out. Hope it. We all put on great races and uh, it's it's entertaining for everybody. And I, and I hope we win. And get to kiss bricks, the bricks, and drink that milk. Are they letting you guys kiss the bricks? I couldn't remember. I heard like two different things from people. I know oh, like, coronavirus and everything. Are they letting you guys kiss the bricks? I, I have no idea, dude. I, I, just, I didn't even know that, actually. So there's no telling. I'm sure coronavirus screwed that up, too. <laughs> yeah, probably. But I wanted to ask people uh, one more question here before I let you go. So with the new schedule, 2021 schedule, they're coming out with, you know, they're thinking the newer tracks and everything. There's rumors. But for you, what is, what is one track that, you know, is currently, this can be for Xfinity Series or Cup Series, that's not on, for, in your case, we'll say, not on the Xfinity Series schedule. What would you want to see added to the Xfinity Series schedule? Oh, boy. Uh, I'd say Eldora for us, man. That'd be cool as heck. I grew up being a dirt racer, so dirt dirt's in my background, and I think that'd be an awesome show for us to go do. Uh, so that'd be my vote. Yeah, I know they've talked about that for, for Cup Series. I think if, yeah, if they had a whole weekend there, um, that'd be awesome with trucks, Xfinity, Cup come in there, you know, once, I think probably just one race every day maybe. They, they could only fit so many people in there. It's a very small facility. Yeah, that could be a place you could literally go and drop the green flag for, and I think it'd work out great. Because, uh, you know, if you had all that going on, uh, that track would be – I'm, I'm sure Tony Stewart being do an awesome job getting it ready, but it would be so hard to keep it not just from being so black and dusty and all of that. So uh, you'd probably have to limit us from all the laps that we would do, you know, may, maybe not practice much and all that stuff. Yeah. So I, I, I did hear one idea on Twitter uh, from a guy, Brian Keselowski, I saw a tweet and he said the all-star race someday they should consider running cup cars and Xfinity cars and trucks on the track at the same time, you know, the best from each series or just put them in one car or just put them all in one car and run them all uh, on the, I saw that somewhere, you know, it's crazy, but it, you know, it got me thinking like, well, maybe they could pull that off or just run an all-star race for you guys. Oh man. I, well, I mean, where, what track? I would, I would think Bristol, a track that – because if it was speed-based, obviously the cup cars would, you know, blow everyone out of the water because, you know, yeah. they're a lot faster. But I would think a place like Bristol, they could make them a little more evened out. Yeah, I don't know, dude. That'd be crazy. So, you, I'm sure there's ideas you could think of, but, you know, the rules are so different for each series, so it'd be hard to race 
one from another. I guess you wouldn't be racing the other series. I guess you'd be racing your same series, but yeah, it's be another sports car. The, you know how they have like different classes and stuff, and he was like, they could organize them. Yeah. Oh, uh, I don't know. It'd be because man, you might you might be racing with somebody, you know, in your series, and then here comes a cup car, and they want to try to pass. It'd be a mess. Yeah. <laughs> I don't see. It, I mean, you could do a one-off, but it'd be a mess and it'd be crazy. That yeah, might be fun to watch. work on a road course, not not yeah. like, not an oval. Yeah. yeah, I don't see it happening on an oval. Like it could happen, I guess, at Pocono, somewhere big, but not. Yeah, not. I don't think it could happen in Bristol. It'd be too small. But yeah, road course for sure. Yeah. So you know, I see you guys getting the car tuned up. Probably heading to Indy uh, this weekend. Good luck to you. Uh, thank thanks you for coming in here, talking to me. I uh, hope you uh, get some experience on Forza tonight. You said, and then uh, we'll practice in uh, Friday, Friday for the race on Saturday. I sure am. Thanks, man. I appreciate you having me. <laughs> no problem, man. Thank you for coming on. All right, buddy. Take care. You too.